Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. Uh, we're actually we're actually in the family afterwards. We've just started. We looked at the first page last week. We're on page 123. So we, we've done with the wives, but now we're with the family. And this is far more important for the alcoholic than to wives. To wives was just to wives. There was a few little things about the about the, um, the, the, the alcoholic, but now the alcoholic is part of the family. <clears throat> so about 50% of this is going to be for the alcoholic and how we show up in the family. It is also, <clears throat> it's also um, assuming that the, the alcoholic has begun to work the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. So, or if not begun but is, oh, it may have even gone through the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. So let's look at, um, I won't go back over the first page because it's a sort of preamble to it, but on page 123, well, actually at the bottom, at the bottom, the last, the last paragraph on page 122, it says sensation, cessation of drinking. And this is like, you know, the, I came to Alcoholics Anonymous to stop drinking. But here they're telling us that since the cessation of drinking, stopping drinking, is but the first step away from a, stra- a highly strained abnormal condition. And the highly strained abnormal condition is alcoholism. And we don't have to be drinking to suffer from untreated alcoholism. <clears throat> I spent six years in Alcoholics Anonymous, not drinking, a member of AA, fully paid up, had worked the 12 steps, decided that I didn't need the 12 steps anymore, and I started running the show. For six years, I was an untreated alcoholic, and I was running on untreated alcoholism until the day when suddenly I thought about drinking. Out of nowhere, I suddenly had to decide, see, you really screwed up this time, you might as well drink. And that was a wake-up. I didn't drink that night, thank God, and it was thank God, because it wasn't me that kept me sober that night. But... It brought me back. It brought me back to AA, and it brought me back into the big book. A doctor said to us that years of living with an alcoholic is almost sure to make any wife or child neurotic. The entire family is, to some extent, ill. Let families realize as they start their journey, all will not be fair weather. Each man in this turn may be foot sore and, will be, and there will be alluring shortcuts and bypaths down which they may wander and lose their way. And we alcoholics are very good at going down bypaths and shortcuts. We like shortcuts. We don't like doing the whole thing. We, we don't follow directions very well. And we have this alcoholic ego that says, you see, I know, I know what I need to do. Okay, no, but not my sponsor knows what I should do, but I know what to do. And I go off and I go off down a byway and I end up hitting a brick wall or something like that and whatever and having to come back with my tail between my legs and say to my sponsor, sorry, but I'm, oh, no, uh, well, I screwed up this time. Oh, yeah, do, 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 uh, do inventory. Anyway, <laughs> So it says, top of page 123, it says, suppose we, we tell you some of the obstacles a family will meet. Suppose we suggest how they may be avoided and even converted to good use for others, not necessarily for the family. It's for others. Now, this is a theme that runs away all the way through this book, that this is about a a, a, um, a a fellowship that is altruistic. We are not thinking about ourselves. We're thinking about how we can help other people all the time. The family of the alcoholic longs for the return of happiness and security. They remember when the alcoholic was romantic, thoughtful, and successful. I'm going to use the alcoholic because it's non. It's kind of it can be done between the husband or wife, father or mother. Today, life is measured against those older years, and when it falls short, the family may be unhappy. 
Family confidence in the alcoholic is rising high. The good old days will soon be back, they think, if there were any in the first place. Sometimes they demand that the alcoholic bring them back instantly. God, they believe, almost owes them recompense on a long overdue account. But the alcoholic has spent years pulling down structures of business, romance, friendship, health. These things are now ruined or damaged. It will take time to clear away the wreck. And we start clearing away the wreck by doing our amends, but also <clears throat> our bodies need to come acclimatized to living without alcohol. It takes a while. And also our brains need to acclimatize to working without alcohol as well, because we actually learned how to think and how to function loaded and now we haven't got any alcohol anymore our brains don't work quite right somehow so it's going to take somebody says it, ta it, it would take six, at least six months for the body and brain of an alcoholic to kind of get back to living without alcohol and one of the things i was told when i first got to alcoholics anonymous by my first sponsor was to go see your doctor and go and have a checkup Get some blood, get some blood stuff done around your liver and all that and kidneys and that kind of stuff. So that you so you get a, a clean bill of health because alcohol is corrosive to the to the body, particularly as we metabolize it. Because we metabolize it down to a, down to a, a a thing called acetaldehyde. And acetaldehyde is one of the things that our liver and pancreas break alcohol down to. But in the alcoholic, it stays in that state for longer than it does in normal people. And it causes havoc with our, with our organs. So we need to check this out. <clears throat> Though old buildings will eventually be replaced by finer ones, the new structures will take years to complete. And it does. It does take years. Sometimes uh, it, we, we end up changing our lives completely because of the, of the 12 steps. So the alcoholic knows he is to blame. It may take him many seasons hard work to be restored financially, but he shouldn't be reproached. Perhaps he will never have much money again. But the wise family will admire the alcoholic for what he is trying to be rather than what he is trying to get. And this is something that, that, is, that is very important. This is about, about who we are, about our integrity, about how we show up in life. It's not about gaining stuff and whatever. It's about who we become. And with God's help, that is a totally different person, believe me. Now and then, family will be plagued by specters from the past, ghosts from the past, for drinking career of almost every alcoholic is marked by escapades, <laughs> escapades, funny, humiliating, shameful, or tragic. And you can add all of those together. I mean, sometimes it was all of them all at once. The first impulse was to bury these skeletons in a dark closet and padlock the door. The family may be possessed. Wow. I mean, that's a strong, that's a strong word, possessed. By the idea, that means they can't think about anything else. The idea that future happiness can be based only on forgetfulness of the past. We think such a view is self-centered and in direct conflict from the new way of living. Why? Because our dark past is the greatest thing that we have when we're talking to a newcomer. I can go and relive the last days of my drinking for a newcomer. I can tell him my, my drinking story for a newcomer. I'd still, it's, it's still fresh. I'm not, keeping it for, I'm not keeping it green so I don't go back. I'm keeping it for the, for the, for the newcomer. I'm free of all that stuff. I'm a different person now. I'm, I'm not the person that came to Alcoholics Anonymous. I'm really not. <clears throat> Henry Ford. Now, Henry Ford... I got a feeling that Henry Ford, you know, now we, we got things like on the internet and stuff and you get on your, on Twitter and your smartphone and WhatsApp and stuff. And there'll be quotes from, from people like, um, like Einstein and 
all that. And that Einstein seems to have all the wisdom in the world. Well, I got a feeling that at this time, Henry Ford was one of those people that had all the wisdom. They kind of, he ended up in the newspapers and stuff. They didn't have internet in those days. I mean, nothing like it. But he must made a, he once made a wise remark to the effect that experience is the thing of supreme value in life. Okay, well, that's fine. I also had another wise remark was that you can have any color car you want as long as it's black. <laughs> he was very simple. He was like one, 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 one uh, model of car, the Model T, and they were all the same color. <laughs> that's it. Now, that's the end of that. Now they're going to sort of, they're going to add on something to that from, the, from their experience now. They're going to add on something to Henry Ford's experience as the supreme value in life. It says that is true only if one is willing to turn the past to good account. In other words, yes, having the experience is something, but what do you do with it is important. We grow by our willingness to face and rectify the errors and convert them into assets. See, having knowledge is fine, but knowledge is absolutely useless without action. The alcoholic's past thus becomes the principal asset of the family, and frequently it's almost only one. Because now they're talking about the beginnings of Eleanor. And the families that have made mistakes, have had problems with the alcoholic, can now pass those, those, the, those or relive those for, the, for other families, but can also talk about how they've overcome them by using the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. Unfortunately, Al-Anon, <clears throat> Al-Anon doesn't use the big book in many, many, many circumstances, um, which is a great shame. They do have their own literature, um, and they have their own version of the 12 steps and they have a, they have a sort of workbook thing, uh, which I've looked at, which, um, well, it doesn't go anywhere near the 12 steps, but there are some big book al and there are some al out there that are doing, doing the 12 steps. I do know, I know of a whole bunch and they're the ones who are really useful. They're the ones who are out carrying the message to others. <clears throat> The, this painful past may be an infinite value to other families still struggling with their problem. We think each family which has been relieved owes something to those who have not. Just like us, the alcoholics, we owe it to these people who are coming. That's our job. And when the occasion requires each member of it should be only too willing to bring out former mistakes, no matter how grievous out of their hiding places, showing others who suffer how they, we were given help is the very thing that makes life seem worth, worth, so worthwhile to us now. And that's the 12th step. And the 12th step makes the program of Alcoholics Anonymous alive. We get through the first 11 steps and then we start to carry the message. That's where it comes alive. That's where the juice is. That's where the power is. Cling to the thought. And I've got this highlighted, and it's good for the alcoholic. It's good for the family. Cling to the thought that in God's hands, the dark past is the greatest possession you have. Why? And this is one of the biggest deals in the book. It's the key to life and happiness for others with it this is a gift you can avert death and misery for them just with my dark past i talk about my dark past to an alcoholic he gets it if he works the 12 steps he'll get to a place called recovered he will no longer be dying of untreated alcoholism and he can carry that message to somebody else and carry that message to somebody else and they can carry it to somebody else and the whole point I believe the whole point of the fact that we get sober, the whole point is that we carry it to somebody else. That that's our gift that we get given. And it's going to tell us in this chapter, in this chapter, not in the rest of the chapters, but in this chapter, it's going to tell us about it. It is possible to dig up, we're bottom of page 124. It is possible to dig up past misdeeds so they become a blight a veritable plague 
For example, we know of situations where the alcoholic or his wife have had love affairs. In the first flush of spiritual experience, they forgave each other and drew closer together. The miracle of reconciliation was at hand. Then, under one provocation or another, the aggrieved one would unearth the old affair and angrily cast its ashes about. A few of us, including me, have had these growing pains and they hurt a great deal. However, <clears throat> husbands and wives who have sometimes been obliged to separate for a time until new perspective, not the old perspective, but a new perspective, new victory, not the old victory, new one. We don't know what it looks like. You're going to have to think about this. You're going to have to do inventory on it. You're going to think about it. You're going to sit with it. You're going to take it to God. New victory over hurt pride, which is dangerous for um, uh, selfish, self-centered people to have pride. So hurt pride could be rewon. In most cases, the alcoholic survived this ordeal without relapse, but not always. So we think that unless some good or useful purpose to be solved, the past occurrences should not be discussed. <clears throat> it's a principle. So we don't discuss, we don't, unless there's some good reason to discuss them, like making an amend. We families of alcoholics keep fewer skeletons in the closet, or everyone knows about the other's alcoholic troubles. This is a condition which in ordinary life would produce untold grief. Now, one of the things that, that about my home group is a very small group. We are quite a small group, our home group. We are about maybe maximum a dozen people. And But we all know about each other's drinking. We all know about each other's stories. And we all, and we all, we all care for each other in that group. We do 10 steps together. Stuff like that. It's it's a very we are very close knit. Anybody new comes in, we like them to work through the twelve steps with a sponsor in the group. We don't make it a condition if they have a sponsor outside the group. That's cool, but we do like them to have gone through the or go through the twelve steps of Alcoholics Anonymous because that was what we're there for. We're there to teach and practice the twelve steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. That's the whole purpose of our group. <clears throat> That's probably why we remain small. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but we, we do we do welcome anyone that comes. We are actually online now, by the way, on Mondays, uh, Big Book Study on Mondays. If uh, if afterwards, if you want to send me an email, my email is up there, jerseyp81 at gmail.com. Um, I can send you the link. Anyway, enough of that. I'm, I'm the end end of end of the <laughs> end of the commercial. Um, so it says this condition, which in ordinary life and in badly run Alcoholics Anonymous groups <coughs> and Al-Anon would produce untold grief. There might be scandalous gossip, laughter at the expense of other people and a tendency to take advantage of, imp of intimate information. Among us, these things are rare occurrences. We do talk about each other a great deal, but we invariably temper such talk by a spirit of love and tolerance. And love, we can take tolerance and compassion. We put compassion in there. And it's a principle, step 10. Love and tolerance of others is our code. Now, one of the things that, that we do is somebody doesn't show up in our meeting for a couple of weeks, we send them an email or we, we phone them or whatever, say, hey, how are you doing? <clears throat> Dr. Bob, in his last talk, he was dying of alcohol of uh, colon cancer, which was kind of uh, he was. I mean, he was a proctologist, so that was kind of kind of weird. Uh, it's kind of like he's dying of something that he used to treat. Um, but he said when he the last things he said in that very short speech he made in the at the I think it was 1955 something like that at the World Convention. He said he said something like this. He said, "And let us and let us." Be wary of that errant member, the tongue. And what he was talking about was gossip in Alcoholics Anonymous. And we don't do gossip in Alcoholics Anonymous. It's very important because it kills people. It really does. 
when we do talk about someone, we talk about someone to, to find out where they are. I mean, what's happened to this guy? Where's he disappeared to or whatever? Can, if we sometimes talk to each other and say, can we help this guy find something, to some work or something? <clears throat> Not to him, but to ourselves. Another principle we observe, another principle, is that we do not retaliate, we do not relate intimate ex experience of another person unless we are sure he would approve. And that's gossip. We find it better where possible to stick to our own stories. Now, I use a couple of stories in amends in the ninth step from a couple of people that I sponsored with their permission. I don't mention their names, I mention the circumstances. Uh, usually they're mistakes that they made in the amends. One of them was very amusing. Well, it was it was amusing to me, but it wasn't amusing to him. But anyway, that's another story. The man may criticize or laugh at himself and will it affect others uh, favorably, but criticism or ridicule coming from another often produces contrary effects. Members of a family should watch such matters carefully for one careless and inconsiderate mark, remark has been known to raise the very devil. And one of the things about this family afterwards, you know, is Alcoholics Anonymous is a family. We are a family. We're brothers and sisters in AA. And so we are a family. So this, 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 the, the, the principles in this chapter are very useful around AA. We alcoholics are sensitive people. Oh, my God. I love this bit. It takes us a long time to outgrow that serious handicap. Oh, I'm so sensitive. Oh, my God. My sponsor said, get over it. <laughs> he says, it's a character defect. Get over it. <laughs> We're so sensitive. It's, um, we can be sensitive in another way. We can be sensitive in a way we're sensitive of other people. But we can't, mustn't be self-sensitive. It's one of the things that's the self-centeredness of, of alcoholism is that we are sensitive about ourselves. Oh, I'm hot. Oh, I'm cold. Oh, I'm upset. Many alcoholics are enthusiasts. Okay, now that's an interesting word. It comes from Greek. It comes from filled with God, en theos astis, filled with God. Isn't that amazing? That's what enthusiast means, someone who is filled with God, en theos astis. They run to extremes. Oh, yeah, you bet. Drunk or sober. At the beginning of recovery, a man will take, as a rule, one of two directions. And this is almost absolutely, absolutely right. They can have slightly changed, but it's a similar sort of thing. He may either plunge into a frantic attempt to get on his feet in business or financially or at work or whatever, or he may be so enthralled. And that's, that's an interesting word as well, enthralled. It's sort of bewitched by. It's sort of in the thrall of. It's sort of completely um, sort of in a bubble. By his new life that he talks of little, uh, talks uh, or thinks of little else. Um, it's, uh, I've got a, a dictionary um, thing here. It says, fascinated to the exclusion of all else. <clears throat> in either case, certain family problems will arise. <laughs> they sure will. With these, we have experienced galore. We, the people who wrote this book, not the families, this is the people who wrote the book, the alcoholics, we think it is dangerous if the alcoholic rushes headlong into his economic problem. The family will be, will be affected also, pleasantly at first, as they feel their money troubles are about to be solved then not so pleasantly as they find themselves neglected now it's not actually it's not actually written down in this chapter but it seems to me that in both cases the alcoholic is not making amends to his family he is concentrated on where he is 
or she is, but they're not making amends with the family. <clears throat> the alcoholic may be tired at night and preoccupied by day. He may take small interest in the children and show irritation when reproved of his delinquencies. If not irritable, he may seem dull and boring, not gay and affectionate as the family would like him to be. Mother may complain at inattention. They are all disappointed and often let him feel it. Beginning of such complaints, a barrier arises. The alcoholic is straining every nerve to make up for lost time. The alcoholic is striving to recover fortune and reputation and feels he's doing very well. But he's not making amends to his family. And the amends to the family can be often spend more time with them. Everything else, leave everything else in God's hands. That's what we're supposed to be doing. We're not supposed to be striving to recapture our reputation. We're supposed to be leaving that in God's hands. We go back to page 14. <clears throat> back to way back to the beginning of the book. On page 14, it says, simple but not easy. A price had to be paid. It meant destruction of self-centeredness. If I'm trying to get everything back that I had before, it's self-centered. I must turn in all things to the Father of Light who presides over us all. <clears throat> By this time, if we've gone through the 12 steps, we've, we've handed our will and our life, which is our thinking and our actions over to the care of God in, in step three. And we've also given all of us to God in step seven. We've given it all to God in step seven. So why am I trying to regain my reputation? Leave that with God. It'll work itself out. It will come in time. Sometimes <clears throat> um, the partner and children don't think, don't think so. Having been neglected and misused in the past, they write, think father owes them more than they're getting, which is probably money, but not amends. They want him to make a fuss over them. They expect him to give them the nice times they used to have before he drank so much and show contrition. And there it is. The amends, contrition for what they have suffered. But dad doesn't give freely of himself. Oh, because he's concentrating on his stuff. Resentment grows. He becomes still less communicative. Sometimes he explodes over a trifle. I can't help it, but I get, a, I, I get the, every time I read that, I get a vision of a Monty Python film called The Meaning of Life. And in that, there was a big fat guy in a restaurant called Dog and Dog, Mr. Creosote, who explodes when he eats a wafer thin mint. <laughs> it's I, this exploding over a trifle. I love this next bit. The family is mystified. Well, yes, they ought to be. <laughs> Anyway, no, I'm so, sorry, I'm, they criticized pointing out he's falling down in his spiritual program. This sort of thing can be avoided. Both father and family are mistaken. Though each side may have some justification, it is little use to argue and only makes the impasse worse. Well, we've already looked at an argument in the previous chapter. It says if you're having an argument, it's up to one or other to say, this is getting serious. I'm sorry I got disturbed. Let's talk about it later. So we've already got a, a way of diffusing that. The family must realize that the alcoholic, though marvelously improved, is still convalescing. <clears throat> they should be thankfully as sober and able to be of this world once more, not a shivering denizen of King Alcohol's mad realm, as they talk about on the, in page 100, whatever it is, 59, uh, in the last chapter. I love that. I love that first page. I really do. Let them praise his progress. Let them remember that he's drinking raw, all kinds of damage that may take long to repair. Well, certainly the body of the alcoholic is going to take six months to a year and everything else is probably going to take about three to two to three years to get everything back. If they ever get anything back, if they get the, that stuff at all, but actually we're probably going to have something different. It's probably going to be different life because we're now on a different basis. We're on the basis of trusting and relying upon God, which we weren't before. So our lives are going to change, and we should be aware of that. But they're not going to change for the worse. They're going to change for the better. <clears throat> 
if they sense these things, they will not be taken so seriously. His periods of crankiness, depression, or apathy, which will disappear when there's tolerance, love, and spiritual understanding. And there was a there was a, a paper written by a doctor, very short, that said that the alcoholic's um, moods in the first six months or so, or maybe up to the first year in sobriety, are going to be up and down, and there's going to be periods of, of low, there's going to be low periods, there's going to be high periods, and it's all eventually going to sort itself out. But to start with, it's going to be kind of a bumpy road. The head of the household, the alcoholic, ought to remember that he is mainly to blame for what befell his home. Yes, he can square. He can scarcely square the, the account in his lifetime. So they're talking about a lifetime amends here. They're talking about we're in a, in a family. I um, mean, for me, I, I I didn't have a family, but my 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 mum and dad they were they were a li- that was a lifetime amend to them. And to my first wife, it's still I'm still in contact with my first wife. We've been divorced years, years now, but we're still friends. We're still together. She's part of the family. But he must see the danger of over-concentration on financial success. Although financial recovery is on the way for most of us, we found that we could not place money first. For us... Material well-being. Now, I like that. I like that word well-being. It shows up in the long form of the first tradition. Well-being always followed spiritual progress. It never preceded it. What we have to do in Alcoholics Anonymous is we have to have this contact with this power greater than ourselves, whatever we believe that to be, first and that's the 12 steps once we've got that then we align our will with god's will for the rest of our lives whatever that is since the home has suffered more than anything else it is well that a man exert himself there so do the amends folks he is not likely to get far in any direction if he fails to show unselfishness and love under his own roof we know there are difficult wives and families, but they or husbands and families, but the man who is getting over alcoholism must remember they did much to make them so. Living with a self-centered person who is so self-centered, like the alcoholic, who is oblivious to others' feelings generally, though we think we are, but generally we're not, that all we're thinking about is our stuff. It causes other people to be to be also as self-centered and selfish because they're fighting for their emotional lives and sometimes their actual lives. <clears throat> Since the home is, so, um, as each member of a resentful family begins to see shortcomings, hopefully they're working the 12 steps, and admits them to the others, he lays a basis for helpful discussion. That sounds like a, a family fifth step, doesn't it? These family talks will be constructive if they can be carried out without heated argument, self-pity, self-justification, or resentful criticism. And how do you do that? Well, you do that by doing a step four and five, really. Little by little, mother, well, the, the partner and the children will see that they ask too much and that the alcoholic will see that he gives too little. Giving rather than getting will become the guiding principle. I was a taker all of my life, and I had to learn to be a giver. And actually, when you work through the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous and you get enthusiastic, you sort of can't stop from being, from giving, really. Assume, on the other hand, that the alcoholic has, at the outset, a stirring spiritual experience. Overnight, as it were, he is a different person. He becomes a religious enthusiast. There's that enthusiasm again, which is not too bad. He is unable to focus on anything else. As soon as his sobriety begins to be taken as a matter of course, the family may look at their strange new dad with apprehension. Oh, my God. Then with irritation. 
there is talk about spiritual matters morning, noon, and night. He may demand that the family find God in a hurry or exhibit amazing indifference to them and say he is above worldly considerations. Oh, my God. Spiritual arrogance. That's the worst kind. It really is. I'm above that. No, no, no. You look after yourselves. I'm, I'm with God. <laughs> yeah, sure you are. You know, I, I, somebody once said to me, you know, if somebody tells you that they're spiritual, they're probably not. <clears throat> he may he may tell he may tell his partner that who has been religious all her life that she doesn't know what it's all about and that she'd better get his brand of spirituality while there is yet time <laughs> that's unbelievable when father takes this toll the alcoholic takes this tack, the family may react unfavorably you bet they will this may they may be jealous of a god who has stolen dad's affections while grateful he drinks no more, they may not like the idea that God has accomplished the miracle where they failed. And that can be that can be a really deep thing. They often forget Father was beyond human aid. Well, we are beyond human aid. They may not see why their love and devotion did not straighten him out. And my first wife is exactly like that. She tried for six years to get me sober. And I just got worse and worse and worse. And I dragged her down with me. I got a photograph of me in the last two, two years before I came to Alcoholics Anonymous. And she actually looks, she looks better now, 40 odd years on than, than she did then. That is not so spiritual after all, they say. If he means to right his past wrongs, why all this concern about everyone in the world but his family? So he's not making his amends. What about his talk of God will take care of them? Okay. <laughs> Put him in God's hands. No, that's not that's not quite right. They suspect father is suspect father is a bit balmy. He is not so unbalanced as you might as they might think. Many of us have experienced dad's elation. Yes, in the early days, we have we have an overwhelming spiritual experience, some of us. Others others um, probably more safe, a safer bet for the family is that we have the educational variety. <clears throat> we indulged in spiritual intoxication. We get drunk on spirituality. Like a gaunt prospector belt drawn in over the last ounce of food, our, spri- our, our pick struck gold. We come into Alcoholics Anonymous busted, and all of a sudden we can't, we don't drink anymore, and all of a sudden we're starting to feel good, and all of a sudden we're starting to think, hang on a minute, this is great. Oh, I love this. I'm not drinking anymore. I don't, I'm not tired and sick and miserable anymore. Joy at our release from a lifetime of frustration knows no bound, knew no bounds. <clears throat> the alcoholic feels he struck something better than gold. For a time, he may try to hug this new, the new treasure to himself. He may not see that once, that at once, that he has barely scratched a limitless load, which will pay dividends only if he minds it for the rest of his life and insists on giving away the entire product. You see, what we get from getting sober and from having a spiritual awakening is not for us. It's for the people that we will help. We've got to give it away. We've got to give it away to keep it. It's one of the, it's one of the paradoxes of spirituality. The only way that you can keep hold of spirituality is to pass it on to somebody else. And it flows through you. <clears throat> the great teacher in Alcoholics Anonymous, Mark Houston, used to say that we need to be like a hollow bone that God's power passes through us like a hollow bone. Just enough clings to the side for what we need for that day. Just enough. As long as we're giving it away. But if we don't give it away, what we we end up is have spiritual indigestion. We get sick with it. If the family cooperates, Dad will see that he is suffering from the distortion of values. He will perceive that his spiritual growth is lopsided. 
that for an average man like himself, ordinary folks with a family, a spiritual life which does not include his family obligations may not be so perfect after all. If the family will appreciate that dad's behavior, current behavior is but a phase of his development, all will be well. In the midst of an understanding and sympathetic family, this vagaries of dad's spiritual infancy will quickly disappear. <clears throat> we get really fired up. I get, I still get kind of excited, but we get really fired up sometimes. We get a, we have a, a spiritual experience. You get fired up about it. And you want to tell everybody about it. But after a while, the more you tell people about it, the, the kind of it, you kind of talk it away. I, I, I always I always say to the guys I sponsor, you know, if it, stop telling me about what it feels like. Just just be there. Just be in that feeling. Don't tell me. Don't tell him. Just be there. Because otherwise you will talk it away. Spiritual stuff is, is really sometimes fragile. It's really strange stuff because we can't describe it. Not really. Not adequately. The opposite may happen should the family condemn or criticize. Dad may feel that for years his drinking has placed him on the wrong side of every argument. But now he has become a superior person with God on his side. Oh, my God. That, that, is, spiritual, that is total spiritual arrogance. I know a lot of people in different, different denominations in different religions who are like that. <clears throat> They're the only ones. You know? it's, I find that really interesting. <clears throat> How many names for God do we have on this earth right now? And they're all talking about the same thing. I love that. If the family persists, criticism, fell, uh, persists in criticism, this fallacy that I am now removed from this and that God is on my side and they're these sinners may take a little, still stronger hold of father. Instead of treating the family as he should, he may retreat further into himself and feel that he has spiritual justification for doing so. Though the family does not fully agree with dad's spiritual activities, they should let him have his head, even if he displays a certain amount of neglect and irresponsibility towards his family. His sponsor will sort him out. <laughs> It is well to so during these first days of convalescence, this will do more to ensure his sobriety than anything else. Yes, fine, that's great. Though some of his manifestations are alarming and disagreeable, we think that would be on a firmer foundation than the man who is placing business and professional success ahead of spiritual development. He will be less likely to drink again, and anything is preferable to that. Those of us who have spent much time in the world of spiritual make believe. And this is this is the people who wrote this book <clears throat> have eventually seen the childishness of it. This dream world has been replaced, and here it is again, by a great sense of purpose. By a great sense of purpose. And with this sense of purpose. With the sense of purpose is accompanied by a growing consciousness of the power of God in our lives. If we carry this message to other alcoholics, we get to see the power of God in action. Naraj, can you mute, please? Ah, he's just entered the waiting room. Jolly good. <laughs> um, I kept on trying to trying to mute him, but but <laughs> kept on coming back. Anyway, Tampi's got him. We have come to believe yeah. that he would like to. We would come to believe that he would like it. That God would like us to keep our heads in the clouds with him, but our feet ought to be full, firmly planted on earth. That is where our fellow travelers are the other alcoholics, the ones who are yet to find Alcoholics Anonymous. And that is where our work must be done. Must be. These are realities for us. <clears throat> the spirituality that we have in Alcoholics Anonymous 
is infinitely practical. That we, we have this power and we find this power within us, which is very interesting. It's not in the clouds, it's within us. But the only way we can keep that power is by giving it away. It's extremely practical. Every spiritual practice on earth Every spiritual tradition that has ever been has always been compassionate of other people. It's not about ego. It's not about us. We have found nothing incompatible between a powerful spiritual experience and a life of sane and happy usefulness. One more suggestion. Whether the family has spiritual convictions or not, they may do well to examine the principles, the spiritual principles of the 12 steps by which the alcoholic member is trying to live. They can hardly fail to approve these simple principles. Though the head of the house still fails somewhat in practicing them, the alcoholic, yeah, absolutely. No one gets this perfect, you see. Nothing will help the man who's off on a spiritual tangent so much as a wife or partner who adopts a sane spiritual program, making better practical use of it. I, I've got a friend, I've got a couple of friends who are married to al and their big book, Alan Hans, and these are my big book friends, and that's really they have some really interesting dynamics occasionally. <laughs> there will be other profound changes in the household. Liquor incapacitated father for many years, and and the partner became a well, mother, or the wife, or the partner, either way around. She met these responsibilities, the head of the house. She met these responsibilities gallantly. Now, they're talking about the nuclear family as it was in, 1930, in the 1930s, okay? The nuclear family may not be the same as it, as it was then in the, in the 21st century or 20, 21st century. She met these responsibilities gallantly. Um, well, my, my first wife was the bread, bread earner. I, I didn't, I mean, I wasn't making any money. I was unemployable. <clears throat> by force of circumstances she was obliged to treat the alcoholic as a sick or wayward child I certainly was acting like one even when he wanted to assert himself he could not for his drinking placed him constantly in the wrong mother made all the plans and gave the directions when sober father usually obeyed yep because I, I just I didn't want to get into trouble I just wanted to drink Thus, thus, mother, through no fault of her own, became accustomed to wearing the family trousers. Father, you see, this is the this is the dynamic in the 1930s. Dad went to work, mum stayed home, looked after the kids and did the dishes. That's not quite how it is now. I find these references to the 1930s somewhat difficult. However, <laughs> but we can soon swap them around. I mean, we can we can say, yeah, that was the 1930s. Now it's slightly different, but the what they're talking about is the same. If the alcoholic coming suddenly to life again often begins to assert himself. Now that that's fine. That's that happens even now. This means trouble unless the family watches for these tendencies in each other and comes to a friendly agreement about them. So we sit down and we talk about it. <clears throat> Churchill once said. A long time ago, at least he's supposed to have said, that the jaw jaw was better than war war. So what he's saying is it's better to talk to each other than fight. Drinking isolates most homes from the outside world. There's, there's a house across the street. I can see it from where from my balcony. House across the street. It's the alcoholic house. You can tell it from miles away. Father may have laid aside years of normal activities, clubs, civic duties, sports. When he renews interest in such things, the feeling of jealousy may arise. The family may feel they hold a mortgage on dad so big that no equity is left out for outsiders instead of developing new channels of activity for themselves. Mother and children demand that he stay home and make up the deficiency. Now, <clears throat> Once we've settled down into into our into our um, our new way of life in Alcoholics Anonymous, it's a really good idea to start thinking about doing outside stuff, and not just be in Alcoholics Anonymous meetings all the time, but to get involved in 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 the community, get involved in sports, get involved in exercise. For me, I believe exercise is is vital to all of us for a long life and for good health. 
But that's only that's my opinion now. That's not in the book. It's just my opinion. <laughs> Mother and children demand you stay home and make up the deficiency. At the very beginning, the couple may ought to frankly fa- face the fact that each will have to le- yield here and there if the family is going to play an effective part in the new life. <clears throat> the alcoholic will necessarily spend much time with other alcoholics because that's what the program asks us to do. But this activity should be balanced. Should be balanced. New acquaintances who know nothing of alcoholism may, might be made and thoughtful consideration given to their needs. Okay, so they're saying that we should get involved in other stuff other than alcohol, Alcoholics Anonymous. We should be have other interests outside of AA. The problem of the community might engage attention. Though the family has no religious con- con- connections, they may wish to make contact or take membership of a religious body. Alcoholics who have derided religious people will be helped by such contacts. <laughs> Being possessed, of a spiritual experience, the alcoholic will find that he is much in common with these people, though he may differ with them on many matters. If he does not argue about religion, he will make new friends and is sure to find new avenues of usefulness and pleasure. He and his family can be the bright spot in every in, in such congregations. He may bring new hope and new courage to many a priest, minister, or rabbi who gives his all to minister to this troubled world. We intend the foregoing as a helpful suggestion only, so far as we are concerned, the people who wrote this book, there is nothing, and Alcoholics Anonymous itself, there is nothing obligatory about it. There is, we are non, as non-denominational people, or non, if you like, religious people even, we cannot make up others' minds for them. Each individual should consult his own conscience. And there's a whole chapter called We Agnostics about that, and they go on about it all the way through. We don't have any, there's, there's, there, there must be no one in Alcoholics Anonymous that tells us what we should believe. It's up to us. Even my sponsor, he, he couldn't tell me to borrow mine, but I, he didn't tell me what it was. Um, and I was just praying to Billy's God. So, for a while until I got my own idea about what it was. But that's that's the deal. It's got to be make sense to me, not to other people. We have been speaking to you of serious, sometimes tragic things. We've been dealing with alcohol in all its worst aspects, in its worst aspects, but we are not a glum lot. And this is the page <clears throat> where right in the middle of it is this wonderful statement. If newcomers could see no joy of fun in our existence, they wouldn't want it. And here it is, 16 lines down from the top, 16 lines up from the bottom, two words on either side. We absolutely insist on enjoying life. Absolutely insist upon it. We try not to indulge in cynicism over the state of nations. Oh, my God, that's difficult now. Right now, that's really difficult. However, all is well. Nor do we carry the world's trouble on our shoulders. No, nope, don't get involved. I don't get involved in that stuff. I read about it, but I don't get involved in it. I don't have an opinion. I just uh, I look on, I look on with amused skepticism. I think is the right word. <clears throat> when we see a man thinking into sinking into when we see a man or someone sinking into the mire that is alcoholism. We give him first aid and place what we have at his disposal. That's what we do. That's what we do. We don't get involved in that other stuff. We give him first aid and place what we have at his disposal. For his sake, we do recount and almost relive the horrors of the past. See, this is about this is for the alcoholics, not just for the family. But those of us who have tried to shoulder the entire burden and trouble of others like finding them places to live and places to work and feeding them and all this kind of stuff. Find that we are soon overcome by them. So we think cheerfulness and laughter make for usefulness. Outsiders are sometimes shocked when we burst into merriment 
over a seemingly tragic experience from the past. Graveyard humor in Alcoholics Anonymous is there all the time. Wonderful. I love it. Because we can laugh at ourselves. And that's the great thing about it is I can laugh at me and the goofy things that I did. And I can laugh with other people in the room when they tell me about their goofy things because I've probably done them as well. And now here's the biggest promise in the book. This is the biggest thing in the book. But why shouldn't we laugh? We have recovered. As long as we've worked the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous, that is, from the directions in this book, we have recovered and have been given the power to help others. I'm going to digress slightly. I'm going to go back to page 50, okay? Let's go back to page 50. There's something really interesting happening here. This book is really wonderful. It, it, it goes back and forwards, back and forwards. But there's something here which I don't even think that, that was even thought about where, when this chapter we're reading today was written. But on page 50 in We Agnostics, there's a paragraph right at the bottom of page 50. And it says, here are thousands of men and women, worldly indeed, they flatly declare, declare that since they've come to believe in a power, capital P, that's God, greater than themselves, to take a certain attitude towards that power, capital P, that's God, and to do certain simple things, that is, that, so that's step three, and then on through the 12 steps. There has been a revolutionary change in their way of living and thinking in the face of collapse and despair, in the face of total failure of their human resources, they found a new power, small p, a new power. I wonder what that new power is. Do you think it could possibly be that power on page 132? That we've been given the power to help others? Because it's got a little p. It's not God. It's a little p. It's us. And here we are on page 132 telling us that we've been given the power to help others. God, that's, a, that's amazing. Everybody knows that those in bad health and those who seldom play do not laugh much. So let every family play together or separately as much as their circumstances warrant. <clears throat> we are sure God wants us to be happy, joyous, and free. There it is. Happy, joyous, and free. We cannot subscribe to the belief that this life is a veil of tears. I was taught that when I was a little kid. They used to tell me that. I, there was a prayer. There was even a prayer. There was a prayer. I can't remember what it was, but it was, it was about the veil of tears. Though it once was just that for most of us. I mean, we were... We were, we, were, we were taught from little kids that we were, we were sinners and we were going to go to hell. I mean, what's that all about? That's not religion. That's control. That's what that is. It's abuse. But it is clear that we made our own misery. Yes, we did. <laughs> oh, yes, we did. God didn't do it. Avoid then the deliberate manufacture of misery. But if trouble comes... Cheerfully capitalize it as an opportunity to demonstrate his omnipotence. Goes back to page 14. I was to turn to the Father of light in all things. Goes back to that. I must turn in all things to the Father of light who presides over us all. <clears throat> there is a this is, a, this is an aside, okay? This has nothing to do with Alcoholics Anonymous. This is an outside issue, and I don't talk about it because I think this is very important about this, about this, this practicing the omnipotence of this power. There was a, <clears throat> about 600 years ago, there was a lady who was known as Julian of Norwich. And Julian of Norwich lived in a pandemic. It was the most disastrous pandemic, which we've had, we're in a pandemic now, the most disastrous pandemic that ever happened in Europe, and it was called the Black Death. She was seven years old when it started, 
And throughout her life, it kept on coming back. And about one in three people died, if not one in two, depending on where you were. And she lost her, she, it looks like she lost her husband and child, and she became what is called an anchoress. And she was bricked up in a small cell alongside a church in Norwich that had a window into the church and a window out into the, into the, into the, the world. And she had visions, and she wrote them down. And she was the first woman to write in English. Everybody else wrote in Latin or in whatever, but she wrote in English. Unfortunately, it took her 500 years for a book to be published, <laughs> which was kind of slow. And when it was published, nobody read it because it was by a woman. But it is available now. And she had a saying. And this is in a part where there was not only there was not only pandemic, people dying everywhere. There was there was upheavals, there was political wars, there was all sorts of stuff going on. And she said, All is well. All manner of th um, all sh all shall be all is well, all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well because she was trusting God. And there's some very, very interesting stuff, because <clears throat> she had a vision one day of a, uh, in her hand, she was holding, there was a small ball in her hand, and it was kind of glowing. And she asked, what is this? And the answer was, that's the universe. And she's holding the universe in her hand. And she says, it's very fragile. And the answer was, it's held together by love. <clears throat> I think that's the core of what we're doing here. The spirituality thing, not religious, it's spirituality thing. It's held together by love. We're all brothers and sisters in Alcoholics Anonymous. We have rituals in Alcoholics Anonymous when we start a meeting and stuff. We're, we're a spiritual organization, or we should be. <clears throat> and we are here to demonstrate this omnipotence of this power. Because we are miracles, all of us, that are, that are sober today. So now about health. I know they're going to go on about what I go along. I, I bang along about it as well. A body badly burned by alcohol does not often recover overnight, nor twisted thinking or, and depression vanish in a, in a twinkling. We are convinced that spiritual mode of living is a most powerful health restorative, particularly with our minds. We who have recovered from serious drink are the miracles of mental health. But we have seen remarkable transformations in our bodies. Hardly one of our crowd now shows any mark in dissipation, of dissipation. But this does not mean that we disregard human health measures. God has abundantly supplied this world with fine doctors, psychologists, and practitioners of every kind. You know, there's some health problems that I have that God won't fix. I've got to go see a doctor. <laughs> There's doctors out there. I don't say God will fix it. No, no. Go see a doctor. Dog, do, do, God's fixed the doctor already. Do not hesitate to take your health problems to such persons. Most of them give freely of themselves that their fellows may enjoy sound minds and bodies. Well, it depends on where you live. Sometimes doctors are very expensive, but... Um, I'm, I'm very fortunate I live in a country where we have social medicine. Try to remember that though God has wrought miracles among us, we should never belittle a good doctor or psychiatrist. So let's stop complaining about psychiatrists and doctors in Alcoholics Anonymous about giving us bad medication and everything else like that. They're doing the best they can with what they got. They don't know about alcoholism. 
Their services are often indispensable in treating a newcomer and following his case afterwards. One of the many doctors who have had the opportunity of reading this book in manuscript form told us that the use of sweets was also helpful, particularly in the early days of, of recovery. Of course, depending on a doctor's advice, some people are diabetic. <clears throat> you can get diabetes from drinking alcohol, you know, because it's a carbohydrate. And some people, there's quite a lot of diabetics in AA because of the, the effect of alcohol on their pancreas. Should constantly have chocolate. I like this guy. I like this doctor. Constantly have chocolate. Handy. <coughs> Excuse me. For its quick energy value in times of fatigue. One of the things that I was told a long time when I first came to Alcoholics Anonymous, that because alcohol is a carbohydrate, this, is, this comes from a doctor. He said it's a carbohydrate. Your body is used to metabolizing large amounts of hydrocarb uh, carbohydrate quickly. And so when you're not drinking that amount, we're not taking in that amount of carbohydrate, then what you're going to have is a low. You're going to have a sugar low. And he said chocolate is brilliant because it not only has um has the the sugar in it it's got it's got some calories in it as well which is it tends to be fat which is slightly better than sugar but he said it also has got some other things in it i can't remember what they are but he said particularly dark chocolate it's got other things he said which are which are very useful for your your nerves and for your for your general sort of feeling um so yeah, I, I still I still have I've got a bar of eighty five percent in the cupboard over there. It's my kind of doctor. He added occasionally in the night a vague, vague craving arose, which may be satisfied with candy. Many of us have noticed a tendency to eat sweets, and we have found this practice beneficial. How many meetings do you go to when on the table there's this great big basket of a basket of sweets? sitting in the middle of the table. <clears throat> Word about sex relations. I'm going to fi- I am going to finish this. Yeah, I'm going to finish this. This is cool. Word about sex relations. Alcohol is so sexually stimulating to some people that they have overindulged. Couples are occasionally dismayed to find that when drinking is stopped, the, the, uh, the man tends to be impotent. Unless the reason is understood, there may be emotional upset. Some of us had this experience only to enjoy a few months of finer intimacy than ever. When I got to Alcoholics Anonymous, I'd never been intimate in my life except when I was loaded. I'd never, I'd never done it sober. Never in, been in an intimate situation sober, ever. <clears throat> There'd be no, there should be no hesitancy in consulting a doctor or a psychologist if this condition persists. We do not know of many cases where the difficulty lasted long. The alcoholic may find it hard to reestablish friendly relations with his children. Their young minds were impressionable while he was drinking without saying so. They may cordially hate him for what he has done to them and to their mother. A friend of mine <clears throat> who's, who's uh, in our group uh, talks about um, when he'd come home that the kids would run away and go into their bedroom and shut the door. His wife would be there, but he, he's, the kids had run away, shut the door, and they wouldn't let him into the bedroom. <clears throat> he didn't do anything bad to him. He didn't abuse them or anything like that. They just got frightened of him when he was drunk because he wasn't their dad. He was Dr. Jack. He was, he was Mr. Hyde. He wasn't Dr. Jekyll. <clears throat> the children are sometimes dominated by pathetic hardness and cynicism, particularly if they've been abused in some way. They cannot seem to forgive and forget. This may hang on for months long after their mother has ex- accepted dad's new way of living and thinking. And very often, uh, alcoholism is um, associated with domestic violence. Very often. <clears throat> I never hurt any. I used to hurt myself. That's weird. When I got, into, when I got angry when I was drinking, I used to hurt myself. I used to bang my head on walls and punch out doors and stuff. It was, I, I'm not sure. I even stabbed out, I've still got the scars. I stabbed out cigarettes on my hand. <clears throat> strange, it was just strange stuff. In time, they will see that he is a new man and in their own way, they will let him know it. 
when this happens, they can be invited to join morning meditation. And that, that would be a wonderful thing. I, I could, I, I would, I would, I, 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 I wish I could have experienced that, to have a family that meditates together. That would be really something. And then take part in the daily discussion. This is 10, this is 11 step stuff. Morning quiet time. Think about the plans for the day. From that point on, progress will be rapid. Marvelous results will often follow such a reunion. Whether the family goes on a spiritual basis or not, doesn't matter. The alcoholic member has to, if he would recover. There's no, there's no, that's not a suggestion, is it? The alcoholic has to. The others must be convinced of his new status beyond shadow of a doubt. <clears throat> and that takes time. And it takes action, not words. <clears throat> they, they've heard us, they've heard all the words, words we'd ever said. We've, everything we've ever said, they've heard hundreds of times. Sorry, 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 sorry. Now they're looking for what's going to happen, what the action is. They're going to watch our feet, not listen to our words. Seeing is believing with most families who have lived with the drinker. Here's a case in point. <laughs> this is a guy called Earl T., and his story's in the book, in the fourth edition, still there. Um, it's, it's called He Sold Himself Short. Okay, this guy started Alcoholics Anonymous in Chicago. He was one of Dr. Bob's guys. Here's a case in point. One of our friends is a heavy smoker and coffee drinker. Okay. Well, they were all heavy smokers, it seemed to me, in, in, in early AA. I mean, Dr. Bill, Bill died of emphysema. You only get that through smoking lots of, lots of cigarettes. Dr. Bob was smoking all the time. So was his wife. There's some wonderful photographs of Van, of Van Smith with a cigarette up. She probably rolled her own as well. I wouldn't be surprised. There was no doubt he overindulged. Seeing this and meaning to be helpful, his wife commenced to admonish him about it. He admitted he's overdoing these things, but frankly said he was not ready to stop. Well, not drinking. His wife is one of those persons who really feels there is something rather sinful about these commodities. So she nagged. And her intelligence, inter intolerance finally threw him into a fit of anger. And what did he do? He did what every alcoholic does when they're angry. He goes and gets drunk. <laughs> that's, that's drinking poison and hoping the other person's going to die. I mean, it's just crazy stuff. But that's what happens to us. I showed them. Of course, our friend was wrong, dead wrong. He had to painfully admit that and mend his spiritual fences. So how did he mend his spiritual fences? Well, if he relapsed and he had a good sponsor, his good sponsor will take him back to the first step. And it won't be the drinking part of the first step. It'll be the unmanageability part of the first step. Where you're running the show, you're running the show. Though he is not, though he is now a most effective member of Alcoholics Anonymous, he is. He started Alcoholics Anonymous in Chicago. He still smokes and drinks coffee, <laughs> but neither his wife nor anyone else stands in judgment. She sees, uh, she she sees she was wrong. Oh, that's that's difficult. In making a burning issue out of such a matter. When his more serious ailments, like alcoholism, were rapid, being rapidly cured. We have three little mottos which are apropos, and here they are. This is for the family, okay? But Alcoholics Anonymous, in their wisdom, added one on, and we use them in the in the um, in the meetings. First things first: live and let live. Easy does it. Now that one took some took some getting in, but. What it means, it means don't struggle. It doesn't mean take it easy. It means do it, but do it easily. Do it without resistance. That's what it means. Easy does it. Do it without resistance. And then in Alcoholics, Alcoholics Anonymous Wisdom, we added one to the slogans we have in the room, and it's think, think, think. Well, on a previous page in the early chapters, they say that the main problem of the alcoholic sentence is mind rather than his body. And it seems to me that three thinks is actually far too much thinking for any alcoholic to survive, to be honest. So I don't think that one should be in the room, but that's only my opinion. Okay, so I'll finish that chapter next week. We are around the employers. Thank you, everybody, for 
being here. Thank you, Tambi, for inviting me. And if nobody's told you they love you today, God does, and I do too. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.